We got no food. We got no jobs. Our pets' heads are falling off! Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 moments we found out comic actors could nail dramatic roles. In case I don't see ya. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. For this list, we'll be looking at the most effective times a comedic performer turned to drama. Did we forget an impressive transformation from a comedian? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Will Ferrell – Everything Must Go Playing the furthest thing from Ron Burgundy, Will Ferrell stars in a movie about a man that's at a low point. You need to put up some curtains. Why? So I don't have some drunk staring at me all day? No, so you don't have to look at your future. This isn't for comedic effect either, instead focusing on a salesman who gets fired and loses his wife. Farrell deals with the character's faults in a complicated tale about the effects of alcoholism. Through his worst moments, the anti-hero comes to realize the bigger picture as he sells his possessions and meets new people. It's been a pleasure working with you. You too. The actor could have easily tried to milk the comedy out of every scene. Rather than turning it into a hilarious or melodramatic plot, the performer minds the depths of a nuanced man faced with confronting his mistakes. What happened? What do you mean, what happened? Life happened. Work happened. Marriage happened. Number 9. Jason Siegel – The End of the Tour Based on a true story, this drama takes a look at a brief glimpse into the life of David Foster Wallace. Have you always been uh, unlisted? I had to do that recently. It was, it was getting kind of crazy. Oh, because of, uh, because of fans? I don't know if fan is exactly the right word. The author has a journalist follow him around as he conducts his book tour. Jason Siegel plays the writer in a role that gives him plenty of room for a subtle emotional journey. Opposite Jesse Eisenberg, the comedian doesn't attempt to mimic the man so much as capture his essence. You know what I would love to do, man? I would love to do a profile on one of you guys who's doing a profile on me. Mm, that is interesting. Or is that too pomo and cute? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe for Rolling Stone. but It would yeah. be interesting, though. You think? Uh. The underseen film allows Siegel to break away from his trademark goofiness in broader comedies. In the best possible way, the performer doesn't give you everything and instead invites you to ask questions about his choices instead. I think if the book is about anything, yeah. it's about the question of why. Number 8. Monique – Precious Known for her stand-up comedy and television work, Monique is widely known as a successful comic actress. Nick. Your flyer said you were gonna have honeys and lingerie. Oh, well, give me a minute and I'll go change. <laughs> her performance in Precious is that much more impressive, given that it resembles none of her previous work. She plays the abusive mother to the title character, often verbally and physically combative. I know the day the doctors put you on my goddamn hand, you wasn't a goddamn thing. Tense sequences show off her rough parenting style as a woman that's full of anger and pain. The comedian steals every scene with her ability to both command attention and let go of her emotional barriers. Winning awards for her role, the performer created a scary and believable person. And I don't want you to sit there and judge me, Miss Weiss. You shut up and you let him abuse your daughter. I did not want him to abuse my daughter. I did not but want him to hurt her. Him I did not want her. him to do nothing to her. Number 7. Melissa McCarthy – Can You Ever Forgive Me? Over the last two decades, Melissa McCarthy displayed her talents as a physical comedian in both TV and film. What did we eat? Oh, the sinks are gone out. What are you doing? It's coming out of me like lava! She finally received an opportunity to break out from typecasting for Can You Ever Forgive Me? This drama centers around Lee Israel, a writer that sold forged letters to make ends meet. McCarthy isn't afraid to play someone that's both scamming people and not exactly fun to be around. I think I have some cousins, I think. <laughs> not into the family thing? No, I like my alone time. Oh, not every second, though. The role requires her to go against all of her comedic instincts, instead forcing the actress to play an all-around cold personality. In Israel's lowest moments, there's still enough room for the comedian to provide some shred of humanity. Um, I don't have a backyard or anything, so I wasn't sure what to do with her. It's okay. We can we can take care of that here. Number 6. Jim Carrey 
The Truman Show. Shooting to stardom in the 1990s, Jim Carrey quickly showed everyone that he was the next king of physical comedy. It's okay! I'm a limo driver! He established so much success in the genre that he eventually went for dramatic works like The Truman Show. He plays a man who slowly realizes he's the star of his own TV show, forcing him to react to an increasingly mind-bending plot. What the hell are you talking about? Who are you talking to? Carrie goes from a wide-eyed dreamer to a desperate hero searching for answers. By the time he discovers the truth, the comedian has run the gamut of emotions on his chaotic adventure. The comedian ultimately finds both sadness and happiness inside a likable hero. Who are you? I am the creator of a television show that gives hope and joy and inspiration to millions. Then who am I? Number five, Carol Burnett, Friendly Fire. Bringing laughs for years on her own variety show, Carol Burnett holds a legendary place in American comedy. Your concern for my Brashley is overwhelming. You have a full and generous heart. You're sick. <laughs> she rarely took on dramatic roles until projects like Friendly Fire came along. After her son dies in Vietnam, a mother tries to carry on without him. Burnett takes a chance with this part, considering that it's both deadly serious and emotionally revealing. What is it? Names. Everybody in Michael's life. I don't even know some of them. She easily could have cried throughout the movie, but instead, the actress deals with grief in a much more nuanced way. Her character, Peg Mullen, turns her pain into action as she protests the war and tries to understand her child's death. Alongside her co-star, Ned Beatty, the comedian gives a raw performance that doesn't shy away from the complexities of the Vietnam era. Oh, God. Why well, couldn't, why? Why couldn't he have been blown to bits? so I could believe he died in a war. Number four, Jamie Foxx, Ray. Jamie Foxx continuously shows audiences that he's one of the most talented performers of his generation. Hey, Ray Robinson, when I'm here, you play, baby. Well, that may cost you. His ability to sing and act helped him win the role of Ray Charles, guiding him through the singer's life from nobody to superstar. The biopic allows Fox to use his musical ability, along with his gift for drama. I admire what you're doing, man, but you can't afford this. George is our highest grossing state. I play any more of those Jim Crow joints ever again. Did you got that? He completely transforms into the musician, capturing every nuance from Charles's voice to his mannerisms. His ability to sell the legend's peaks and valleys as a man never fails to impress. Shocking viewers with his dedication to the part, the actor won an Academy Award for good reason. You were the soul of this band. Now, every time you're around, you're, you're just drunk. Drunk soul of a blind jockey. What a lovely couple. Number three, Mary Tyler Moore, Ordinary People. Before this serious performance, Mary Tyler Moore made her mark on TV shows like The Dick Van Dyke Show and her own sitcom. Tell her what he said, Mary. Go ahead. After two long years, he said... Why rush into things? Her cheery personality brightened up those projects, but it's nowhere to be found in Ordinary People. This adaptation of the Judith Guest novel features Moore as a cold mother that doesn't allow herself to forgive her son. You did. You lied every time you came into this house at 6.30. If it's starting all over again, the lying, the covering up, the disappearing for hours, I will not stand for it. I can't stand it. I really can't. Over the course of this domestic drama, her character drifts further away from her family until she finally decides to leave them. It's definitely a heartbreaking role that allows the actress to bring out a darker side of herself. Can't you see anything except in terms of how it affects you? No, I can't, and neither can you, and neither can anybody else. Only maybe I'm just a little more honest about Must it. Number two, Adam Sandler, Punch Drunk Love. Adam Sandler took the 1990s by storm with his silly brand of comedy. You better relax, Bob. There is no way that you could have been as bad at hockey as you are at golf. All right, let's go. After making several hit films, the actor explored a more serious role in Punch Drunk Love. This Paul Thomas Anderson movie pushes Sandler to produce a more well-rounded character. 
the comedian plays Barry Egan, an anxious man with anger issues who enters into a whirlwind romance. What exactly is wrong? I don't know if there is anything wrong because I don't know how other people are. He's able to show off his romantic side after some touching scenes that get to the heart of a troubled man. It's not completely devoid of humor, but the project definitely gives audiences a look at the performer's more dramatic side. The result is a powerhouse showcase of his natural talents. The pudding is not a sales item. Why? It's not for sale. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Bill Hader, The Skeleton Twins. As the depressed Milo, the comedian reconnects with his sister in this underrated dramedy. What does it even matter anymore, Milo? You got your revenge, you got it! I was trying to lay it out on the table. Oh, you, wanna lay, to you wanna lay it out on the table? Yes. Okay, then go for it. You're emotionally unstable. You're a prick. Luke Wilson, The Royal Tenenbaums. The actor embodies a misunderstood tennis player contemplating his own existence. Can we read it? No. Can you paraphrase it for us? I don't think so. Is it dark? Sasha Baron Cohen, The Trial of the Chicago Seven. Cohen brings his charm and wit to Abby Hoffman in this courtroom drama. I don't like it when we fight. Rennie? Tom should be heard. And he was. But when we walked in here this morning, they were chanting that the whole world is watching. This is it, we're on. This is what revolution looks like, real revolution. Cultural revolution. Olivia Coleman, the favorite. The performer becomes Queen Anne in a powerful display of royalty gone wrong. Stop it! Stop it! Stop! What is that? I would like to go back to my room now. Jennifer Aniston, Cake. The TV and film comedian excels as a serious character dealing with substance use disorder. Don't forget. Please do not set the alarm. Oh yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It's okay, it's just, it's so loud. Yes. Sleep well, I hope. <sighs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Robin Williams, Dead Poets Society. Robin Williams might have been the wildest comedian of all time, but he was also able to tackle serious drama. The film Dead Poets Society gave him a major chance to flex his other creative muscles. As the inspirational teacher John Keating, Williams turns subjects like poetry into engaging topics for his students. He's exactly the kind of instructor that you wish you had in school. Now my class, you will learn to think for yourselves again. You will learn to savor words and language. Aside from a few comic moments, the performer delivers lessons that tug at the heartstrings for their passionate and sincere demeanor. It was one of several Oscar nominations for the actor that solidified the full range of his abilities. Thoreau said most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Don't be resigned to that. Break out. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.